one of the more interesting conversations this offseason has been the conversation around the center position. It's so interesting because Brock Hoffman has a podcast, but Brock Hoffman has a very sneaky fan base, Zach. Brock Hoffman, Cooper BB. You can even add TJ Bass in there. He was taking some snaps at OTAs, but I think we know the, the big two. Brock Hoffman, Cooper BB. Let me ask you this, Zach. I've asked you on each of these verses how you think of the players. I'm going to take it a little bit different. Hopefully this isn't a curveball for you. I'm going to take it a different route. Zach, do you think there's a world where Mike Solari will be comfortable playing two rookies on the Dallas Cowboys offensive line? I do because he's 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 coaching for his job. So I assume you're talking about BB and Guyton. If when you get out to camp, if BB's the better player, I don't see a world where you trust and no offense to Brock Hoffman, seems like a great guy. All those things where you trust the undrafted free agent over the top 75 pick that has proven to be good enough to start in the, on this offense. I don't see a world where Mike Solari doesn't feel the need to start the best player. And we'll get into it, who we think, B.B., Hoffman, all of those things. But I, I think ever since B.B. was drafted, my thought was you're going to have two rookies starting on the offensive line. The only thing holding it back is poor play in the training camp, poor play in the preseason. I I, I don't want to say I couldn't agree more, and I wish that we could disagree on some of these things more. But, Zach, I couldn't agree more. And I think that, you know, I talked to Brian Broadus about this. I've read kind of some of these tea leaves. I was listening to a podcast with Brandon Thorne on it, who's he, he's really sharp when it comes to O-line play. And I get all of these things, right? But I don't see a world where how Cooper BB is built, and unless he just can't pick the line calls up. So the, the world where he doesn't start is the communication part, right? Yeah. Um, understanding protections, understanding the checks, understanding and ID in the mic in real time, whipping that snap back there and still being able to handle business. That's the world where Cooper BB could get out by could get beat out by Brock Hoffman. Um, Hoffman just seriously just being in the system a year longer, knowing more than Cooper BB. Yeah. I still don't think that he would you could justify looking at both because for me, Zach, I, I O line is such a body beautiful position, and it's such a man. Jimmy's and Joe's versus. I want to say yes, X's and O's, but I I, I think that O line is a, a a Jimmy's and Joe's position uh, position, and it's a that that's the metric, right? Like when you looked at Tyler Biotish, I think that Biotish may have probably been your smartest lineman last couple years. He was really intelligent. He was never out of place. The problem was he was physically incapable of doing and, and holding up in certain ways, Zach. Yep. Cooper BB does not have that issue. That's actually one of his strengths is how literally strong and big and wide and low to the ground and power and leg drive. It's all there. And so that that's really where I'm at with it, Zach. How, how how could Solari justify playing Hoffman? I think I'm coming around on the idea, though, because when B.B. was drafted, I'm like, B.B. starting to center. I think I am coming around on the idea that it actually is a camp battle. I, I don't think that B.B.'s walking in there and taking it day one as a third rounder, just walk in and immediately get the job. It's not very common anyway, um, especially if you have a guy that's been there for you know two or three years that has started some games for you like Hoffman has. But like you said, BB's more powerful, he has great play strength, and he's going to hold up a lot better. And this is my concern if Hoffman does win the job. These NF NFC East defensive tackles are nasty. I mean, Jalen Carter, Dexter Lawrence, that's some big bodies in the middle. And a guy like BB, you know, Washington too, they got some nasty defensive tackles. And that's my concern. And it was with Biotish, you need a people mover inside. You need a, a people mover at center. And like you said, BB is that guy. Yeah. So, in, in concluding in that, and, and, and I want to say this, I think the the path for him to successfully win the job is the run blocking aspect of things. If he can show that he can consistently get movement in the run game and consistently 
you know, move people and move gaps and on those duo schemes. Because that was one of the reasons that made, and that was one of the reasons that made the Cowboys pay Terrence still was, you know, pass sets were okay, but he was one of the better run blocking tackles in the NFL. If BB can come in and show like, hey man, you know, because I, I I'll never forget. Tyler Linderbaum wasn't even that big of a of a center for the Ravens, but his run blocking was so good. And he was so technically sound. If BB can show up in that way, I think that there's no way that you play the guy. And especially in preseason, if he's showing that he's moving guys and there's no issues in the run blocking, I think that there's no way that you don't play the guy day one. 